<laughs> How's it going, bros? My name is PewDiePie! Oh, stop, please! Oh, I don't like this. You have to like do- Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. oh. Hi, what are you doing out here, okay? Top of the morning to you, laddies. My name is Jack Septicon. I have to do it, come on. You ever watch a video on YouTube that makes you wonder, how did we get here? How did we get to Let's Plays and donating our entire bank account to e-girls for their personality? <laughs> I remember a time when there was no such thing as making a career off of video games on YouTube. In fact, we couldn't even monetize our videos to begin with. Those were good times. And in order for you to understand how all of this happened, I'm gonna have to take you back to the past. All the way back to the early days of YouTube. All the way back to this guy. He'll take you from the present to past to watch some anime that sucks ass. He'd rather have both his rice balls get crushed and deep fried in an old rusty walk. He'd rather die by samurai than to hear this guy with the bow tie talk. He's the angriest weeb you've ever heard He's the Asian otaku nerd He's the Asian Netflix manga nerd He's the Asian anime nerd Alright, well I want to make this movie hopefully like in the next year or two and the title is the confounded crazy critters who devoured neurotic livestock and couldn't stop dying so they had to carry their own tombstones over their heads. Hopefully I can make that next year, but there's too many, too many special effects. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. This is James Rolfe, or some of you may know him as the angry video game nerd. He created his channel back in 2006. His first video game review was on Castlevania 2 for the NES. You could even say that this was one of the first Let's Plays on the platform. A simple video of commentary where James talks about how bad the game was and all the problems you encounter such as a text box that appears when it transitions from day to night or how you stand next to this wall and a tornado will pick you up. In his second video, he films himself in a white shirt with pens stuffed in his pocket drinking Rolling Rock due to the frustration that he has to relive when he talks about the game Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Now it may not seem like much, but compared to back then, these types of videos were... Yes! What? The Asian anime nerd here in my garage? Yeah, it's me. And don't worry, I'm gonna help you review the angry video game nerd. Wowee, thanks, that'll be great. How are you gonna help me? By encouraging you from afar. Oh. Uh, thanks, I guess. Don't worry, you got this. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go watch some anime. Now where was I? Oh right. Aside from his creatively vulgar rants, he was a character that incorporated skits into his reviews. Yeah, you, you like that game, huh? <laughs> Back then, the internet consists of otters holding hands or people sitting in front of their camera with a ton of jump cuts. Basically, Philip DeFranco. His style hasn't changed in 10 years. I remember classic YouTubers like Fred and Dax Flame and Lonely Girl 15 to name a few, but they all came about a year or so after the angry video game nerd. I mean, there was this. Ah, uh, stop it. And then there's the nerd. I'll show you some funny tricks. You see, before James became a YouTuber, he was a filmmaker. So throughout his lifetime, he had already made over a hundred movies, most of them being short films and taking place in his backyard. Even though he already had his website Cinemassacre.com, in true filmmaker fashion, he would copy his short films onto a VHS tape and pass them around to friends. Fun fact, the Angry Video Game Nerd was on VHS before he was on YouTube. Now that's nostalgia, and no, I'm not talking about the critic. This anime is ass! I mean, it starts you off right in the middle of a fight scene with no context whatsoever. Plus, I'd say that the main character is a prick. I mean, what were they thinking? 
I'd rather have an anal evacuation and a donkey chew on my left butt cheek while a Komodo dragon takes a diarrhea dump into my eyes just so I don't have to watch this putrid, repulsive animation of weebness. I'm trying to keep this as PG as I can. It's very clear to me that a lot of other YouTubers would later take inspiration from James's format and style. Content creators like JonTron, Pro Jared, and even the Nostalgia Critic who would eventually find their own voice. And then there's the Irate Gamer who is basically a copycat of the nerd. I remember him pumping out at least two videos a month and considering it takes me two months just to make one video, you can imagine how stressful it was for him. Later I found out it's because he had a contract with ScrewAttack. They would upload the full video to GameTrailers.com and James would upload a trailer onto his channel to direct traffic to the site. Now back then, this was a really smart way of turning YouTube into a career. Aside from working with ScrewAttack, James was one of the only YouTubers I know of to take their content and turn it into a DVD set. I actually still have my Season 1 DVD of the Angry Video Game Nerd right here. But why would you buy something like that when you can watch it for free on the internet? Along with the episodes, there were bonus features including deleted scenes and a lot of extra stuff that you couldn't see anywhere else. Nowadays, this type of content would be what you would get if you were to support someone on Patreon. Beside the nerd character, James made other series as well. Series like, you know what's bullshit with the bullshit man, a guy whose face is made up of bullshit. Yeah, just so much bullshit happened to him in his life that eventually he became bullshit. And there was Board James, another character similar to the nerd except he focused more on vintage board games. Which by the way, this series is one of the greatest murder mysteries and psychological thrillers to ever have been uploaded onto YouTube. I highly recommend you watching Board James after you binge watch the nerd videos. This was also when we were introduced to Mike Matei, who up until now had been playing guest characters throughout the nerd episodes. And believe it or not, it was Mike who convinced James to upload these videos onto YouTube in the first place. Because I didn't think that much. I didn't know it would be so big. So I was just right. like, okay, I'll put it on the site. I didn't think you YouTube didn't even know. You didn't even big. know what YouTube was. Now we're about four years in and James had grown his channel to incredible heights. But over time, I started to realize that his uploads were becoming less and less consistent. You know, there's a lot of word going around that I'm, I'm slowing down. I'm, I'm going to retire the nerd soon. I'm walking away. This is the script to the Angry Video Game Nerd movie. A full-length feature film about my favorite nerd sounded awesome. I was so obsessed with the idea I couldn't wait. Now I've been on YouTube long enough to know that consistency and familiarity are crucial to growing your channel. If you change your content or upload sporadically, not all your viewers will stick around. Mike Matei was taking over and I didn't really comprehend what was going on. It didn't occur to me that while James was filming his movie, Mike was holding down the fort so like many others I lost interest and I forgot about the nerd. Fast forward about 8 years and my interest along with YouTube has changed dramatically. I started finding an interest in vlogging and cosplay and I love cinematography and my knowledge on cameras grew. And with the world in the middle of a global pandemic, I had a bit more time to browse YouTube. This is when I stumbled on a video about the last blockbuster. Back when I was a kid, I'd go there to rent video games. And hey, that guy looks really familiar. Why, that's James! He was the angry video game nerd, so I guess now he's making random videos? Well, let's see what else he's been up to. I fulfilled the prophecy! Who are you guys? What? Yeah, what's what's Nobody tells me what's I, going I, I, I on here. What is this? Who's He's been uploading videos for the past eight years? Where was I? He even made videos with Macaulay Culkin and Gilbert Godfrey. You know, the voice of Iago from Disney's Aladdin. I make a lot of the stuff around here. What's that? That's my company computer. Um, is it made out of coconuts and bamboo? And hyena feces. LOTS AND LOTS OF HYENA FECES! Not only has he been consistently uploading onto YouTube, he actually finished the movie. The film was funded through Indiegogo with a goal of $75,000, but it raised over 400% with an ending budget of $325,000.
That's crazy. So after waiting for eight years, I finally get to watch the Angry Video Game Nerd movie. Twice. Thrice. Okay, five times. I, I love it. It tells the tale of the game E.T. for Atari, and how the game was so bad that it caused the video game crash of 1983. It was rumored that Atari had buried all of the remaining cartridges in the New Mexico desert. The nerd leaves his basement to debunk the myth and goes on an adventure of a lifetime in true B-movie fashion. No, not that B-movie, I mean... I... <sighs> if you know James and the Cinemassacre style, then you know that this B-movie quality was exactly what he was going for. It was meant to be campy, it was meant to have practical effects, and CGI was only used when needed or to be ironic. <laughs> James didn't make the greatest film of all time, but he did make his dreams a reality. It's time to say goodbye to the past. Time to move forward and create those movies in my dreams. Because dreams are where it all started. Now don't get me wrong, there are other YouTubers who have movies based off of their internet personality, such as Smosh and Shane Dawson and Fred, but... I doubt any of them were as hands-on as James was with his film. The next thought was to use a dummy, which is what I did, but this whole alien, nerd, Atari, sausage link couldn't be thrown horizontally, so the only solution was to hang it from the ceiling and drop it down through the vent. So I hanged it first, and then when I knew exactly where it would drop, I began constructing the fake ceiling and vent. Away we go! He literally would be filming scenes in his basement by himself in the middle of the night. I mean, look at these clips. The amount of work that has gone into his vision is unmatched by any YouTuber. If I was a, a big director, I think that I would actually try to force that. I would try to keep it like a home movie style. I don't know if the general public would pick up on that though, but I think that would be a good thing to, to try and I think that should be something I should strive for, I should try to, to get that out there. Now some may say that this movie was a failure and it's what led to his downfall, but I disagree. I believe that what it did was it weeded out his fake fans, the ones who were upset that he wasn't uploading his monthly nerd episodes and instead they get these Q&A premiere showings. I'm like, oh great, I got all like 20 video games hooked up to one electrical app and everything. Like, the fire marshal's gonna come into the nerd room, great. So then he comes in and he's like, oh my God, I remember these games. Now it's been widely speculated that James no longer writes his own scripts for the nerd videos and that the newer videos no longer hold that certain charm that the old ones did. But maybe that just happens with growing up. Whether or not this is true, I can't necessarily say I blame him. I mean, YouTube has evolved so much over the years, it's only natural that the content creators need to do so as well. And it's pretty obvious that he's made a lot of sacrifices along the way. In some of his panels and Q&As, he talked about how he wanted to make another movie. Not just the nerd sequel, but actual movie movies. Do you guys have a next big dream? Just making more movies. I think this one kind of is like the sampler platter of all the different things that I've you know, plan to do. I think it's also worth noting that while he was making his movie, his wife was pregnant. That's right. During the making of his film, he became a father. Now whether or not he pursues another movie, his family comes first, and YouTube is a more secure platform to make a living off of. It might not have been the direction he wanted to go, but nothing ever goes as planned in life, and without James and the angry video game nerd, there would be no PewDiePie, there would be no Markiplier, no Jacksepticeye, no Game Grumps. Channels that do Let's Plays and Twitch streams, they're a product of his video style, where the video focuses more on the person than the game itself. Damn, I remember when it was like frowned upon to have face cam. Oh, you just care about yourself, huh? The gameplay should be more important. In conclusion, the biggest takeaway from this is that the evolution of the gaming community is the result of James following his true passion, filmmaking. He found a platform to express his creativity and as a result, it became revolutionary. And that's why we need more content creators like James. We need more creators who are obsessed with the process of the art instead of the end result, which can be fame or money. You have inspired me to become a filmmaker. What's some advice to inspire filmmakers? I just wanted to ask you, how am I getting inspired by like, a lot of small-time filmmakers? Thanks a lot for making this movie. You make me want to 
to make more videos in school. Even though I may never get to work with him personally, in some strange way, he's been mentoring me. All of his premieres and behind the scenes videos gave me valuable insight into what it takes to make something on a bigger scale than just YouTube. But more importantly, till this day, he still takes me back to the past. By rediscovering his channel, he helped me relive the early days of YouTube, which are long gone now. I remember the excitement I had when making videos, even if I wasn't good at it, all that mattered was I was enjoying myself. I think my dream would be to uh, make a really big cult sensation, like maybe just have people going nuts in the theaters, like Rocky Horror Picture Show. So to James, if you ever see this, thank you. You've inspired me along with millions of other nerds out there. So here's to you, the father of YouTube and the short film. I'd like people to look at me like I'm just like... Maybe I just want people to look at me like I'm like the, the life of the party. <laughs> or that uh... In a way, really, I... I, uh, without my movies, I'm, I'm nobody really, but I, I made a hundred stuff.